All right. I think I mentioned to you in my email that for the midterm, one of the largest areas that's covered is acid base material. It incorporates acid base theory along with program calculations and all kinds of other stuff. So here's a quick review of <laughs> one heck of a large topic. So this might take a little bit. Okay. Um, I'll try to point out along the way some of the uh, trickier problems that you can expect on the midterm. They did throw a few zingers at you, and I'll try to point out along the way what were there. Real quick, um, traditionally, acids and bases, acids and bases are opposites of, of each other. They react with each other, they destroy or neutralize each other. The old way of thinking of acids and bases, acids donate protons H+. Plus. Bases donate hydroxide ions, OH minus. These two things, all by its lonesome, a proton is quite damaging. It will eat through metals, bones, teeth. All by its lonesome, a hydroxide will dissolve your flesh, dissolve quite a few metals. Put these two things together, what, you get, what do you have? You have water, hence neutralization. Nasty thing gets together with another nasty thing. They kill each other and they turn into water. What you absolutely have to know are your strong acids. There's only six of them. You should be aware of them. They're hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid. Uh, these are called the binary acids. There's just two pieces to them. Um, for the binary acids, I hope you can all see that... Uh, what we're looking at there is we're going down the periodic table. So uh, hydrogen hooked up to chloride. They get stronger as they go down. So the strongest one is HI. HCl is still strong. By the time you get to HF, HF is actually a weak acid. So HCl, HBr, HI, those are your strong acids. And for the binary acids, they get stronger as you go down a column on the table. Okay, your oxoacids, sometimes called your ternary acids, you'll have things like nitric acid, H O3, sulfuric acid, H SO4, perchloric acid, H C L O4. Those are your strong acids. Now there's only six of them. You should definitely know those strong ones. You're going to have a whole slew of weak acids. There's hundreds and hundreds of weak acids. You don't have to memorize them. Uh, but bottom line is, uh, if you're an acid, if you're not one of these, you're weak. These are the strong acids. Strong bases. Strong bases are the uh, salts of the hydroxide. Uh, and they're taken from... Uh, these two columns in the table. So lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide would be your strong bases that you darn well better know about. <laughs> lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide and your barium hydroxide. They're good strong bases. They will dissolve your skin very quickly. Uh, they will tear your skin apart. Turn your skin into soap. That's how you make soap. A good strong base plus some animal fat that's coming from your skin. You get soap. Okay, real quick. You got your strongs, your weaks. Uh, what are your weak acids? Weak acids, a real common one hydrofluoric acid, HF. Real dangerous stuff, even though it's a weak acid, quite dangerous. Don't uh, mess with it without some special training. Um, uh, hydrocyanic acid, HCN, also quite dangerous, quite toxic. Uh, nitrous acid, HNO2. Guys, do you all notice HNO3 is strong? Nitrous acid, weak. Uh, for these strong acids, if you just remove an oxygen, it's not as strong anymore. You start stripping away oxygens, 
and suddenly you get yourself a weaker acid. A real common weak acid, carbonic acid. O3. How weak is that? You drink it all the time. If you drink a soda, that soda contains carbonic acid. It's simply carbonated water. Um, so those are simple weak acids. A real important category of weak acids would be the carboxylic acids. If you remember from organic chemistry, you have some carbon group attached to a double bond O. H, that thing makes it a carboxylic acid. Those are weak acids. So you get things like acetic acid, CH3, O2. Uh, that CO2H is supposed to represent the carboxylic acid group. Uh, there's thousands and thousands of carboxylic acids that all act like weak acids. This hydrogen can come off. That's your acidic hydrogen. You'll also see this one quite often written as O2. So acetic acid in my notes shows up this way. That's the way they do it in the textbook as well. All right, so those are some weak acids. What are your weak bases? Here's a very important thing to know. If you're a weak acid, your conjugate is a weak base. How do you make something into a conjugate? You simply remove one hydrogen. So if I take that hydrogen away, I've got fluoride ion. Fluoride ion in solution is a little bit basic. This guy will react with water and produce hydroxide ions. If you're a weak acid, your conjugate is a weak base. Guess what? He's the acid. CN minus 1 is a weak base. Nitrous acid, nitrite ion, is a weak base. Any of these carboxylic acids, uh, you take away that acidic hydrogen and it's a weak base. So here, if I take away this guy, he's my acidic hydrogen there. Whatever. We've been writing it, so C2H3O2, he's going to be a weak base. How do you get these weak bases into solution? You have to put them in as a salt. You can never find a bottle of just ions without counter ions. So if you wanted to put fluoride ion into solution, you might grab a bottle of sodium fluoride or potassium fluoride, drop it into water, associates to, you know, this one would give you sodium ions and fluoride ions. This one would give you fluoride ions. So again, these weak bases have to be applied as a salt. Now, another uh, weak base, another type of weak base, one is you got a weak acid, take its conjugate, that's a weak base. Another weak base, real common one, is ammonia, NH3. Ammonia is a weak base. There's no charge on it. You don't have to supply this one as a salt. It's a neutral compound. So ammonia is a weak base. Hey, if he's a weak base, what about his conjugate? His conjugate would be... this guy. So if you take this, add a hydrogen ion to it, you add a H. Hey, do you see that there are conjugate relationship there? The only difference between these two is the difference of one lousy H plus base. Conjugate is a acid. Uh, the organic derivatives of ammonia if you take any of these hydrogens and replace them with a, a carbon group, that's an organic derivative of ammonia, something like that, say methylamine CH3, NH2, that's methylamine, he's a weak base. If he's a weak base, then 
this guy. With a weak acid. That's the methyl ammonium ion. Methylamine. Methyl ammonium ion. Alrighty. Now, uh, thing to know is in aqueous solution there aren't really any protons. Protons immediately react with water molecules to give hydronium ions. One more thing to point out here, your weak acids, weak bases. Your weak acids always have an acid dissociation constant, Ka. Your weak bases have an base dissociation constant, Kb. One of the ways you're going to try to mess with your head on the midterm exam they will give you a Ka when you need a Kb. Hmm, that's awfully mean. But it's a real easy thing to deal with. For any of these conjugate acid base pairs, it turns out Ka times Kb equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Know that equation when you're taking that midterm. So if you're working a problem and it looks like Okay, I need the Kb, but they only gave me the Ka. They gave me the Ka of this, but I need the Kb of this. Hey, if you if you know the Ka, you know this number, you know this number, this number is always the same. You know one number, you know the other number, you can solve for what you need. I think they do that in a couple of places on the midterm. Sometimes they're nice about it, they give you the right constant. Sometimes they give you the wrong constant and they want to see if you're got your act together to use that. Okay, um, so uh, Bronsted lowry definition of acids and bases. The previous page I gave you the old-fashioned definition, you know, protons come from acids, hydroxides come from bases. Um, Bronsted lowry definition, acids are proton donors, bases are proton acceptors. A couple of reactions here that might of interest. Let's say you had uh, something like this. Hydrochloric acid, he's one of your good strong acids, right? That he were to react with ammonia. What you'll end up doing, what's an acid do? It donates a proton. So he's going to donate this hydrogen ion to the base. He gives up his hydrogen ion and he becomes chloride. This guy accepted that extra H plus, so now he's going to be H4 plus one. Oh, yeah. So he accepted the proton, he's acting as the base. Uh, this stuff here that you would get, some people would just write it as M4 Cl. I'm sure it has two separate species. Some people will smash those two ions together. Um, so in this reaction, this guy's acting as your acid, he's acting as your The acid, after it gives up the proton, is now the conjugate base. Do you see that? This is the conjugate acid base pair. The only difference between these two things is a difference of one lousy hydrogen. The base, he would be the conjugate acid. Yeah, um, interesting one, maybe a little weird for this chapter, uh, but you'll see it if you go on and take organic chemistry, maybe put this definition into perspective for you. This reaction actually takes place, it's sulfuric acid, H2SO4, it's one of the strong acids. You can react it with nitric acid. He's a strong, you're taking two strong acids, can that be an acid base? Like, where's the base? Check it out. He's the stronger acid. The stronger acid will transfer his proton over, and the sulfuric acid becomes H3. Lost his proton. The nitric acid is going to become H2NO3 with the positive charge. 
But even though they're both really strong acids, they'll react with each other and you can tell, hey, in this reaction, he's behaving as the acid because he's donating the proton to this guy. He's behaving as the base because he accepted the proton. For its worth, uh, in organic chemistry, this stuff doesn't stick around. It breaks down into something else. And uh, this reaction is used to make some explosives if you're into making uh, TNT and things like that. Anyway, uh, so that's the Bronsted Lowry definition. You look for who's donating the proton, who's accepting the proton. And you focus in on these conjugate acid base pairs. Here, these two would uh, be a conjugate acid. That should have been H. Should have just been HSO4 minus one. So he donated his proton. So he starts with two, ends up with one. So these two conjugate acid base pair. These two would conjugate acid base pair. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the pH scale real quick. Lots and lots of these problems on the midterm involve calculate the pH of blah, blah, blah. So you better know what pH is all about. Uh, water reacts with itself. So even in pure water, you don't really have pure water. You always have some low level concentration of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. And the way that works, H2O, H2O thing happening, you'll get OH minus 1 and H3O positive 1. So what's going on here? This guy donated his hydrogen to this guy. So after he donates his hydrogen, he loses one of his hydrogens, boom, now he's a hydroxide. After this guy accepts the hydrogen, now he's a hydronium ion. So even in quote unquote pure water, you're gonna have a little bit of this and a little bit of this. It's an equilibrium thing. The equilibrium constant is called Kw. Uh, Kw equals one times 10 to the negative 14th. So the equilibrium expression, concentration of this times the concentration of this over the water. This equation, which you darn well better be good at using this equation over and over and over again. So know this equation. Pretty simple. If you happen to know the hydroxide concentration, you can calculate the hydronium. Or if you happen to know the hydronium concentration, you can calculate the hydroxide concentration. Now, in that nice pure neutral water, it'll have a pH of 7. Your pH scale goes from 0 to 14. Does it go beyond that? Yeah. Does it go into negative territory? Yes. But generally speaking, it's only used from 0 to 14. pH of 7 is considered neutral. That's supposed to be zero. So 7 is neutral. What's going on in a neutral solution? In a neutral solution, the concentration of hydroxide is the same as the concentration of the acidic component, which would be your hydroniums. So the thing that's trying to make it basic is balanced by the thing that's trying to make it acidic, and it is neutral. What is the concentration of these? 1 times 10 to the negative 7. Pretty damn low. I mean, that's 0 0.1. That's the molarity of hydronium ions. That's the molarity of the hydroxides. It's essentially the square root of this. So 1 times 10 to the minus 7th this. 1 times 10 to the minus 7th of this. So in a neutral solution, there's not too much hydroxide. There's not too much hydronium, and they're balanced. Now... Looking at this equation, I hope you can all see if this number, if this concentration goes up, this concentration has to go down. So as you're going up in pH, you're going this way, you're becoming more and more basic. 
or sometimes it's called alkaline. So as you're going this way, the solution is becoming more basic and you have more hydroxide than hydronium ions. So going this way, you're getting more and more hydroxides. Going down in pH, going this way, you're becoming more and more acidic, which means you're getting more hydronium ions than hydroxide ions. And it's a logarithmic scale. So if you go from seven down to zero, that's a sevenfold increase. You've increased the concentration of this by 10 million over where you were here. So here, neutral, going this way, you'll have 10 million more protons. Uh, don't worry about that. What you really got to be good with are the equations, and they're pretty simple. So the equations you got to know here for the pH scale, the definition of pH, the pH of a solution is the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. So if you can find, if you can find this number, the hydronium ion concentration, take the log, change the sign, it tells you where you are on the pH scale. Uh, Let's see, some people use a concept known as POH. So the POH of a solution is the negative log of the hydroxide concentration. So if you happen to know the hydroxide concentration from here or from somewhere else, you know your hydroxide concentration, plug it in, take the log, change the sign, you know, you've got your POH. And a big thing to know on top of all this is the pH plus the pOH always has to equal 14. So if you know the pOH, it's pretty easy to find the pH. Guys, by now I imagine if you've made it this far in the course, you're pretty good with these equations. Um, oh. You should have the equations for going backwards, of course. So uh, for this one, if you know the hydronium, you can find pH. What if you know the pH? How do you find the hydronium? The hydronium ion concentration is going to be the number 10 raised to the negative pH. So if you know this, or I'm sorry, if you know the pH, if you know your pH, calculate hydronium concentration. Hydroxide ion concentration is going to be 10 raised to the pOH. So those are good equations to know as well. Okay, that's your pH scale. Not going to be late with that. Um, now, next thing here, second part of this discussion is three types of problems where they ask, what is the pH of whatever solution? So, what's the pH of the solution? First type of problem, if you have to find the pH of a strong acid or a strong base solution. These ones are easy. Uh, assume that the given molarity of a strong acid is the hydronium ion concentration. It's that simple. What is the pH of 0 0.003 molar HBr? Hopefully you remember, HBr is a strong acid. So that's basically telling you it's uh, that the hydronium ion concentration in that solution is 0 0.003 molar pH. Log of 0.03, and that'll give it to you. Uh, it happens to be, uh, what is that one? 2.52. Uh, so, strong acid, 
they give you the molarity of that acid, that's the hydronium ion concentration. What if they gave you that uh, that concentration and said, hey, what's the uh, hydroxide concentration? Hey, if you know this number, you can find this one. You know this equation and the two concentrations. Okay, uh, for a strong base, same sort of deal. The given molarity is the molarity of the hydroxide concentration. But be aware it might be twice as high if you happen to have one of the strong bases that looks like that, like calcium hydroxide. Remember these guys? So, uh, one of these, you're going to get two hydroxides in solution. So, pH of 0 0.0060 molar barium hydroxide. Hey, that's telling me that my hydroxide ion concentration is times 0 0.006 which is going to be uh, what is that? 0 0.012 uh, yeah so uh, different ways to do this most people go through POH you'd say the POH equals the negative log of 0 0.012 that would give us 1.92 that's not the pH, that's the pOH. The pH is going to be 14 minus 1.92, which would be 12.08. Uh, if you're wondering about that 14 minus thing, uh, again, you're relying on this equation here. H has to add up to 14. So if you know the pOH, subtract it from 14. Uh, those are the easy ones. Strong acids, strong bases, super simple. The tougher ones are these kind here, where you have to find the pH of a weak acid or a weak base solution. Okay, these are equilibrium problems. So you have to make a nice table and solve for X. If the stuff's acting as a weak acid, X happens to be the proton concentration, or the hydronium ion concentration. If it's a weak base, X happens to be your hydroxide ion concentration. I'll show you a little shortcut here in a moment if you're getting burned out on ice tables. But... Uh, Let's see, I had a simple one here. What is the pH of a 0.5 molar solution of acetic acid, Ka? You know it's a weak acid because they gave you the acid ionization constant. So what, what does this acid do? It transfers a proton to the water, boom. So you fill all this out. Uh, the initial concentration of this stuff, what's the concentration of this that you're starting with? 0.5. Concentration of the water is not applicable in our those. We don't need that. Uh, before anything's happened, how much of this do I have? Zero. How much of this? Zero. How does it change? This goes down by x. This goes up by x. By x. The equilibrium concentration, 0 0.50 x. 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 Set up the equilibrium expression for this. It's Concentration of this times concentration of this over the concentration of this. So you say Ka value 1.8 times 10 to the fifth equals this stuff for H3O plus times the other stuff. Let's see. All over your Oh, at equilibrium, the concentration of H3O plus is X. <coughs> X. Concentration of this at equilibrium, 0.50 minus X. 
<clears throat> you're looking at a quadratic equation here. To avoid the quadratic, you assume that x is pretty small compared to 0.5, and you'd say this is approximately equal to x squared all over 0.5. So you're ignoring that x on the bottom. <coughs> hey guys, at this point your problem is what? 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth is x squared all over 0.5. I'm not going to walk you through the algebra, but pretty easy here to solve this for x. x in this problem ends up being 0 0.003. So your pH is negative uh, 2.52. Uh, so if you had a half molar solution of this weak acid, it ought to be 2.52. Now, they're going to mess with you. I know they're going to do this to you on the midterm. They're going to do one like this. Hey, what is the pH of this stuff? And they're going to give you the Ka. They're not going to give you the Kb. They're going to give you the Ka. Uh, of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth for the acid. That's not the acid. That's the conjugate base of the acid. If you take that, ignore the potassium, that right there, the C2, that's the kind of, oh, shoot. You know what they're doing? They're trying to see if you remember. They're trying to see if you remember Ka times K. One times 10 to the minus 14. So solve it for K. One times 10 to the minus 14. All over here. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5th. KB here is going to be um, 5.56 10 to the minus 10th. I did that math in my head real quick. No, of course I didn't. Down on the side here. Okay. Um, so you go through it, make this whole ice table. And here's a little shortcut. For the weak acids and weak bases, you're supposed to make an ice table... Set it all up, solve it for x. Guys, after you've done a few of these, you realize that it always ends up as your solution to the thing always takes the form of Ka equals x squared all over whatever the given molarity is minus x, which you say is approximately equal to x squared over the molarity. What's m there? M is the given molarity of the stuff. So in this problem that we just worked, 0.5 molar acetic acid. Oh, yeah, that was M. M is that guy. Hey, for this one, guess what? I could fill out this table, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take the shortcut. KB is going to be X squared all over the given molarity minus X. What's KB? Uh, 5.56, 10 to the minus 10. That's going to equal x squared. What's my molarity here? 0.7 minus x, which is approximately the same thing as saying x squared all over 7. Again, the bottom term, you can ignore that minus x. Hey, that's pretty easy to solve. Uh, if you go through all your math there, solving this for x, you know, 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10th equals x squared all over 0.7. Solve it for x. x is going to be 1.97 times 10 to the minus 5th. Keep in mind, what is that? That is the hydroxide concentrate, not the proton, not the hydronium. That's the hydroxide concentration.
Uh, so if you take the pOH and subtract from 14, etc., etc., you'll end up with your pH here being 9.29. problem. So again for this one if you know that hydroxide concentration all of that your pOH log of your that's your pOH subtract that number from 14 that's how you get your, your pH. Okay um, I know they're going to give you a problem where they give you a weak base, but they go out of their way to give you an acid dissociation constant. Watch out for that. Okay, third type of problem where you have to find the pH of something. Third problem, finding the pH, buffer solutions. Buffer solutions, the key to a buffer solution is you have to have an acid and it's conjugate base. So your buffer will always have an acid component and a base component. The acid, of course, is the one with the extra hydrogen. So if they describe a solution where you have HF and F minus, oh, acid, conjugate base, that's a buffer. You have a solution with HNO2, nitrous acid, acid, and what else? The acid, his conjugate base, he's a buffer. Acetic acid, the conjugate base, he's a buffer. So in each of these, the uh, negative part is the top part. That's your basic component. Basic component. And the bottom half is your acidic component. They both have to be weak. You can't make a buffer with a strong acid. You gotta have a weak and his conjugate. Uh, now, they might not be so explicit. They might not give you HNO2 and NO2 minus. They might give you something like HNO2 and NaNO2. You're supposed to realize this is a salt. And when it hits the water, it dissociates, gives sodium ions and nitrate ions. When you see this, you're supposed to see it as a source of nitrate acid and his conjugate base. These problems are actually pretty darn, darn simple. Uh, so for this one here, what is the pH of a solution that contains this much of the potassium acetate and this much of the acetic acid? You have to realize, oh, this is a source of the conjugate base. That would be the conjugate base of this weak acid. It will almost certainly give you Ka. And what you have to know is the pKa of that acid is the negative log of the Ka. So the pKa is going to be the negative log of your 1.8, 10 to the minus fifth which will be 4.74. Definitely know that equation because you have to find a pKa. Okay, what are you going to do with this? Oh, this is a real easy problem, really. The pH of that buffer is going to be the pKa of the acid, the acidic component, plus the log of the ratio of your basic component, which is your uh, KC2H3O2. All of your acidic component, which is your HC2H3O2. Uh, so this is going to be 4.74 plus the log of the ratio. Let's see, my base component is this guy, 0.75, all over my acid, 0.50. It's 
run that through your calculator 4.92. That would be the pH of that buffer. So if your buffer has this much of the basic thing, this much of the acidic thing, plug them in. Base goes on top, acid on the bottom. Got it. One last weird one that they're going to ask you about. They're going to ask about a ratio. So let's say you're still on this same system with uh, your acetic acid. Conjugate base is H3O2, which coming from some kind of salt like that. Um, what is the ratio of the basic component to the acidic component? And a buffer needed to give a pH of 5, and it's going to say report as a ratio to 1. Ugh. If you see that type of problem, it, I think it's one of the weirder problems they throw on there, just the wording. It's actually a pretty easy problem with this wording, weirdly. Hey, it's saying it's a buffer. You know you're going to need Henderson Hasselbach, right? What are you going to do? pH of 5. So here for the pH, you're going to plug in. 5. pKa, well, you figured that out. 4.74. And instead of calling it this stuff, let's just say that's your uh, basic component. <laughs> Acidic. Not sure on the test. They might have called it ratio base to acid. I'm not sure how they phrased it. It was awkward. That's what you end up with. How do you solve something like this? Oh, get rid of this term. So you subtract 4.74 from both sides. 4.74 subtracted from 5 is going to give you 0 0.26. 4.74 subtracted from that side, it means that just disappears. So you're going to have that your log of your uh, over your SDK. Huh. Oh, you got to get rid of log. To get rid of the log term, you want to do the inverse log. Some people call it the anti-log. All that means is take both sides of this equation and uh, raise 10 to that power. So 10 to the 0.26 power is 1.8. So 10 raised to the 0.26 power, boom. 10 raised to this power, oh, taking the anti-log just means, oh, get rid of that word. And it'll be your basic over your acidic. So your ratio of base to acid is 1.8.